um, and welcome to July. Today, today's um, uh, meeting, the July 10th regular meeting of the Zoning Board, the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will now come to order. Yeah, you have now I have to say it all over again. Maybe I'll say it better. <laughs> um, welcome to the July 10th, 2024 regular meeting of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will now come to order. Well, that probably already happened. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairperson if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. The board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items as listed. We only have one major uh, or one, one item other than the uh, approval of our minutes, which is appeal number 2762, a special exception appeal. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, the uh, this is a public um, uh, uh, finding, and, and I ask everyone to remember that our job as a zoning board of appeals is to make findings of fact and determinations of law. We're not here to um, uh, make policy or to determine what we think the town council or other bodies might wish to, to have happen. We are a quasi judicial body that strictly exists to find uh, to, to make findings of fact based on the information presented to us. Um, we could bring in our own personal knowledge, but only insofar as it relates directly to the matter um, uh, brought forth. And we can bring in other matters as brought forward by the members of the public. We can't bring anything else to this. Once we do this, we will close the record and we will adopt those findings of fact for each criterion of the appeal. Each type of appeal has a different one. We'll go through a special exception tonight. Um, and then we will vote to determine whether the um, uh, findings of fact justify or justify the appeal or require us to uh, to deny the appeal. On that basis, we'll get started with tonight's uh, order of, uh, of of business. First thing is the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could all stand and <laughs> pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and then Doreen, if you would be so kind to call the roll. David Bork? Here. Richard Silkman? Here. Peter Feilinger? Here. Kyle Noonan? Here. And Joe Doherty? Here. And we have two absentees tonight. Um, so we have uh, um, uh, Christine is not here, and uh, Ray, um, uh, Michelle is not here. Therefore, we are elevating um, Joe to a voting member, right? Both. And Kyle, both, right? So yeah, we have, full yeah. five yep. We have a quorum. I just mm -hmm. want to make sure we do that because I always forget to do the elevation thing when we, we have that. So we have our two alternates elevated to voting members for this, for this evening. Um, the next item is the approval of the minutes from the June 12th meeting. Um, have we had a chance to review? <clears throat> I move we accept them. Thank you. Do I have a second? I second that motion. Thank you, Kyle. Um, not everyone was here. I, David, I know you weren't. Well, I wasn't here. I did have a chance to review the uh, notes, and uh, I can't vote. Got it. Terrific. Then if I could have a uh, vote to approve the, the motion, uh, just a uh, show of hands is fine. All in favor? That's unanimous. Um, the minutes are approved. We then move into tonight's main business, which is the appeal number 2762, a special exception appeal by Mark Peterson. Um, Mark, if you could stand up at the podium, make sure the microphone is on, which I failed to do. When I... Check, one, two. Perfect, thank you very much. And uh, if you could go through and, yes. Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to bring up a, a point here that uh, before we can hear an appeal, we need to make sure the applicant has standing. Ah, okay. Okay. And if I look, look at the lease that the applicant has for the premises, in uh, section 2.1, it says that the uh, tenant shall occupy and use the premises solely as a private residence and for no other purposes, including, without limitation, any commercial or business activities. Therefore, the applicant doesn't have standing, right. he's bound by a legal contract not to do this. That's a fair point, Mr. Bork. Um, thank you for raising that. Mark, um, have you addressed that clause of your lease with your the owner of the property? Uh, the owner of the property is here with me. Gotcha, okay. 
Um, so has a has an addendum or has a um, uh, a rider to the lease been um, drafted and signed? Which we would. Have Got it. I would further add that uh, the applicant has been conducting this business for the past year and a half mm -hmm. at this pro uh, property, um, and has not been doing so in, you know, in uh, uh, by in compliance with the, the lease, and that should have been, you know, something that the tenant you know, should have notified the landlord. You know, that's further in the lease that any changes, and there have been changes made to the property including putting a hole in the garage door, you know, for the exhaust of this. A temporary, process. sir, um, go ahead. We, we, we actually, he's been fully aware of all activities in the property. Right, we don't see anything in writing here that's been given to us to show that there is an agreement. Yeah, and, and, and actually, um, to, to maybe make the point for Mr. Vork on this one, um, Again, we, we, we make findings of fact based on what's presented to us. And so without um, written agreements between yourself and the owner, um, we're kind of at a bind. Um, uh, we, we would need to see evidence that, that there is a, legal, a legally binding agreement that um, the owner has given you permission to do this to date. Um, and we have another issue to deal with on that, which I'll get to in a moment. But we would certainly need some sort of a, of, a, of, evi of, of, a, of a written evidence that shows that the owner ha is is amending the terms of the lease, has amended or is sure. interested in amending the terms of the lease um, to, so as to allow the activity. Okay, sure. Can I, wait? I, I wanted to point out that I've tried at every possible attempt to be open and communicative. Sure. The, the process of doing uh, the coffee roasting is very new in the state. And uh, I had my the, the process inspected by the health uh, Chad uh, for the home processor license, and that process is not easy to do. And so the focus for me was to follow whatever rules were available. And as soon as I knew that there was any question about my ability to do this within the town of Scarborough, I immediately went and filled out and tried to do the right forms. I've tried to do so. There's certainly from David. From I understand and I appreciate your point. I just want to make sure if, if there's an opportunity, if I could probably come back, would that be a better approach and have whatever? Because well, I filled out the forms based upon the questionnaires and tried to provide as much information as I could, and happy to provide whatever additional information is necessary to so you feel comfortable with processing. It. This seems well, like let, let, let me uh, just pause there because I yeah I, I just was, so we haven't heard yet from the landlord, but oh, okay. I think so if prior to him. Oh, oh, hold on, because you're, you're going to have to do it. Yeah, let me hear what Yeah, so, so if, the, if the landlord testifies that he's going to execute an amended lease or a new lease that expressly allows this activity, then I think we can make findings of fact tonight based on the record we have conditional on, or I, I, maybe they don't even need to be conditional as I'm thinking about this. I think if we can just say, we can make a finding based on the oral representation that they're going yeah. to execute a written uh, a written lease. Yeah. And if we don't feel comfortable with that, then we could just perhaps put a condition that next month or at some point we yeah. get a, a, a writing I, that would allow us to. I agree sure with that. If, if, if the owner had not been here, then we would have a we'd be in a different pickle. Yeah. Um, but the fact that the owner is here and is prepared to it sounds like prepared to make attestations um, to, 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 the, to the effect that, that Kyle is describing. Um, I, I, I'm inclined to agree with that. We may have other issues as we go through the uh, appeal um, because of the activity already having taken place. So there are other issues that may come up. Um, but I'm inclined to agree, David, that, that with the owner here preparing, um, uh, seemingly prepared to make attestations, that, that he has um, acquiesced and uh, he has positively acquiesced to the activities to date and he is prepared to enter into a written agreement to update the lease to ena enable the activities, we could use that in, in, in our findings of fact. Uh, just in response to what you just said and what Kyle said, I agree. You know, this makes sense to go forward as long as we have assurances that yep. some specific date in the future, we will have a copy of the amended lease. Yep. Okay? 
Now, in addition to that, I've got to make a disclosure, okay? Uh, Mark is a member of Fork Food Lab. I'm an advisor and consultant to Fork Food Lab. Uh, that doesn't affect the way I'm going to work on this or, mm -hmm. or, or view your appeal. Um, so, you know, I just want to make that assurance up front to the board, okay, that uh, I think I can uh, vote fairly on this okay. appeal. Um, got it. I have a question for our CEO. Go ahead. Does this make um, the owner of the property also a party to the appeal, or is the occupant as the sole member of the appeal okay? <clears throat> no. I, I think that the, the issue of the lease, it's one, one item in the lease. Mm -hmm. He's a tenant in good standing at that address. I think clearing that up doesn't really make him a party to the appeal. It's okay. just, just it, he's just offering testimony to address one concern. Yeah, just one of the, I, the other concern that you raised, uh, Mr. Bork raised, it, it is, it's a valid one, but it's also not unprecedented. We've had at least two or three appeals come before us who operated for a year or more, yeah. some for several years, before they ever knew that they had to actually get a special yeah. exception home occupation. Yeah, so I don't think you can penalize them for doing the right thing just because they were able no, I, to, to I, operate I, I, prior I, I to I don't that. mean to imply that there's a penalty. Yeah, that I just wanted just, to bring we'll that up and clear that up because it seemed like we were headed down a slippery slope there. That no, I no, it, really it just go. will come up in the narrative that we mm -hmm. will have okay. to make note of. So, okay. Sorry for that. For that. Um, but, uh, okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Bork, for, 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 for raising that. Thank you, Kyle, for assisting in the discussion. Um, we'll give the podium back to the, uh, to the appellant. Okay, thank you. Before we do, I mean, I think it really is important to get the landlord on record sure. stating what the conditions in the lease will be that we are going to approve. And he's standing, we're sitting right there, we can get him on the record, because otherwise we don't have, we can't vote yes to that question. No, I agree, but I don't think right now is time for that. I think we will go through our typical procedure, which is to get a general overview of the application a general overview of, the, of the, 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 the situation that we're looking to find fact on. There will be definitely a time when we will need the, the landlord to make that attestation. I just would like to give the, um, the um, appellant a chance to give an overview or a, a summary. <clears throat> but unless we have that attestation, we're not going to hear the, we're not going to hear it. Oh, he yeah, fails the first test. No, no, but, but he, but doesn't have right, he doesn't have right title and interest in the property. But that is a question which is actually not number one on the list of questions. But, but you don't get to come here unless you have right title and interest in the property. I can't come in and say, I want a zoning exemption for a piece of property that I don't own. You would say, get, get out. You don't have standing, which well, is what David's point is. And, and all it would take is for the landlord to step up and say, this is what I, <clears throat> this is how we will change the lease. We will accept this particular occupational activity and then we can move forward. Then I'm not say, sure that I would feel comfortable hearing him say that without knowing why we're here in the first place. So I would like to hear the summary from the, from, from the appellant um, of why we're here. And then I think we will open it up, as we always do, to members of the board to ask questions. But I want to hear the summary first. And <clears throat> I want to, what I want to know is whether he has the right to be here. You'll hear it. But, but I don't, he, right now, he does not have the right to stand up in front of us because he does not have right title and interest in the property. As a point of order, I'd like to run the meeting in an effective way. And I don't find that, that getting that answer at the fair, prior to hearing a summary it provides us with any value. I will move quickly to get that for you, understanding the need that you have for that. But I want to hear a summary first. Do other members of the committee feel the same way, or are you more inclined to want to hear from the landlord first? I, I'm, I'm with you, Richard. I would like to hear from the landlord. I know that is taking it out of order, of the usual order, but I do. I would like to hear that just so that we can make sure we're, we're ready to proceed. My problem with that is I don't have anything on which to make a determination that whatever he says brings us to, uh, brings us to something that we can evaluate. Well, I think I mean, when we hear at the, at the close of the public hearing, we can then weigh the, the sum of the, the evidence. Uh, so I don't, I'm not super concerned about hearing it out of order, I guess. Got it. Um, I'd like to preserve the order that we normally have, if that's okay. Joe, how do you feel? 
I, 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 a lot of good points. It's sort of a chicken and the egg thing, right? A, yeah. a bit. Um, I, I think in the performance standard G, we'll get to this topic and it will be addressed with respect to, you know, do we need to do that on the front end? Um, bef I, I mean, I, I think our, our job here is a finding of fact on all of the performance standards. We will come to a point with standard G where we will have a finding of fact, right? And at that point in time, we will have heard from both of these gentlemen and I think have all of the testimony that we need to make that determination. That's my view as well. Um, this isn't a thing where I'm going to actually look for a consensus or a view from the board as a whole. We're going to move forward as, as I see fit. I'd like to offer my opinion. Of course. Uh, the landlord uh, would certainly be free to make a, a, a comment mm -hmm. during, pu during uh, public comments. Correct. So that would be in order. That would be the correct l listing of order, I agree. So with that, I'm going to bring it back to the appellant to ask to go through um, a summary of your appeal, and then we will go from there. OK, so uh, my name is Mark Peterson, and we're talking about uh, Black Point Coffee, and we're located at 238 Black Point Road. And as David mentioned before, I'm working through a commissary kitchen called Fork Food Lab. And the, the food lab takes care of the um, general services, but they do not have any roasting capability. Um, the roasting I do is very small. I'm uh, just doing a couple of pounds a week. Um, the, the roasting process doesn't take very long, and it's very quiet. Um, I am. Uh, working through, sell, I sell my coffee at uh, so some of the um, farm stands. Uh, I, last year I was at Saco Biddeford. Um, you have a, already have a coffee service um, here at, at the Scarborough uh, Farmers Market. I do several nonprofit uh, support, but most recently the South Portland um, has a port authority that they opened a new building right behind the Hannaford and they asked for coffee service for that. Um, there's also the uh, South Portland Food Bank, um, and I've donated bags to them, as well as working on the Cars for Coffee event, which is coming up this weekend. So um, I am here to request an appeal um, for recognition, as I said before, of better understanding uh, and following due process to be in respect, full respect of the appropriate uh, requirements uh, to do the services. And I also recognize that this is a residential neighborhood um, of which you will find the testimony from my landlord of my respect to the property, my respect to the community. I'm a volunteer at the um, Piping Plover group. I'm also a bird ambassador with them, so I do that on Sundays and Tuesdays. I also teach at the adult ed here coffee classes. Um, one is in tasting coffee, the other is making coffee. Um, so I, I'm trying to do my best in the community and put the right approach together so that I'm just in working for you. Is there anything else that you'd like me to add to my introductory remarks? Not at this point, unless you, I think that's a great summary. But, Thank you. Uh, but no. Great. Um, that's not necessary. May I make a comment here? Sure. The, the new Fork Food Lab facility is all electric and it could, cannot accommodate any kind of uh, gas power, whether it be natural or propane uh, type of cooking. So that's, that's why he has to have, would have to roast beans elsewhere. We would now make a determination whether we have jurisdiction over the spill. And, and um, uh, Mr. Bork and um, uh, and uh, and and, uh, um, and Richard have both, or Mr. Bork has raised a point, and Richard I think has has made it uh, well known that we should consider the fact that there is a rental issue here, and that there we may need some additional representations prior to making a determination that we have full jurisdiction. So now would be, I think, the appropriate time to understand um, you're renting 
from, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Matt Garrett. Matt Garrett. You're renting from Matt Garrett. Um, we don't have any evidence in the in the, the, the correspondence to provide today that there is an adoption of a change in the lease. So, Mr. Garrett, could you comment on, um, yeah, exactly, thank you, um, if head up there, comment on um, any <coughs> Uh, other arrangements that you have made or intend to make with the applicant to um, to give us understanding that we have jurisdiction. Certainly. Uh, so prior to Mark even starting this endeavor, he came to me and said, "Hey, I've been roasting my own coffee beans, and I'd kind of like to take this to the next level. Is this, is this something that you'd consider allowing me to do?" And my answer was yes. But according to the zoning ordinance in R2, you can't run a commercial enterprise out of your house, period. No signs, I don't want parking lots, I don't want people in and out of here, I don't want retail sales, I don't, none of that. And the other condition that, that uh, Mr. Bork brought up was modification of the building. Absolutely no modifications to the structure. And so we came up with an idea of building a temporary wall where he has to be enclosed to comply with the state's uh, regulations on on coffee roasting and food production that this can still be enclosed and not have a modification to vent through the side of the building or otherwise and I said as long as you comply with these conditions what would otherwise be a home occupation and not a commercial enterprise per the zoning ordinance the ordinance of the town of Scarborough I don't have a problem with it um, now in the lease, I sort of read that condition along the same lines of what the zoning ordinance is. It's not a commercial enterprise. At that time, a year and a half ago, there were a lot of people that are still working from home uh, in different capacities, regardless of, of what their job was, and working remotely. So I don't have an issue at all amending the lease to allow coffee roasting and allow him to conduct his, his home business um, I'm not sure what the verbiage would be, right. uh, but which I'll have to have sorted out um, by probably legal counsel or whoever would, would draft that amendment to the lease. But I, um, I have no problem amending the lease to condition Mark to uh, continue his, his operation there. And if I can summarize that, it sounds like you have had the verbal conversations and, uh, and given verbal approval and, and direction to Mr. Peterson um, in line with everything you just said. That's correct. That's correct. Before he was even certified with the state, he came to me first and said, this is what I would like to do. And I gave him conditions on what I wanted out of it and what I didn't want him to do. And uh, I've, he's been up front with me the whole time and I've been abreast of the entire process and he has respectfully complied with everything I've requested out of him. Is there any other questions from the from the board, or are there any concerns with how that's taking place among the appellant and his, his uh, owner? Okay. Okay. You'll probably, as we go through this, and you will obviously have the written minutes and everything, there will probably be a, a request for a written amendment to the lease to, to, to embrace those comments. Um, but uh, we appreciate that that verbal conversation and agreement has already taken place, and we'll, we will consider that as part of the, the, the facts that we'll consider. So if I can add one other thing, his current lease is up at the end of the month. Okay. And we've already signed another lease for him to renew. Mm -hmm. next year, which doesn't take effect until July 31st, August, July 31st. Uh, so it wouldn't be an issue to, to amend his lease for the new one right now. It wouldn't be coming into the middle of a, of a lease period or anything like that. It would start over uh, when his new lease does in three weeks. So start taking notes. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I, I appreciate that very much, Mr. Garrett. Yeah, Thank you. No okay. Um, at this point, we would we will go through the standards for the special exemptions as um, you filled out the, the, the form, obviously, for us. Um, if you could take the podium again. Um, we'll go through these one by one um, and just understand your, your statements of fact for each one. So um, the first criteria, A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reasons of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of des its design or operation. Yep. So um, the, the way this roaster is designed, it, it traps all of the chaff that is created when you 
take the beans and roast them and it comes in a, it comes in a little container, does a little vortex container, so that container can actually be emptied. And that those are actually used um, by many gardeners for um, mulch, so it's actually a, a return and, and return to sustainable. And uh, the, there's very little, uh, it's like a little oven in there. The round circle part, metal part that you see there is the drum. Um, and so you can see it's quite small from a drum size. Um, and it's, I, that five, just give you some that five gallon um, propane tank uh, has, I haven't refilled it in weeks, last weeks and weeks, last several months just in that. So it's super efficient because you're, you're not going more than 400 degrees. Um, you can, it'll run hotter if you had to, but 400 degrees is typically where you're starting, then you're actually making a cooler. Uh, so um, the, the fan uh, is built on the top of that where that piping is going out, uh, and that's less noise or um, ventilation than you have for typical um, uh, dryer vent or a, um, a shower vent or something like that. A question I have, and I'm, others might, the um, the um, emissions to air in particular, how much, and, and I'll admit, I think of a coffee roastery probably on an industrial scale, and they're kind of stinky. Um, but I, I, I'm not familiar with this, so could you describe at least a, a bit of the emissions? Is there a scent or is there an odor or anything that's produced by this? Yeah, there is a slight odor that does come out, um, and it, it's um, pleasing odor. It's not, not, a, not really a, a foul odor. Um, and it's, you would have to really be um, in very close proximity. And if you look at the front, where the, uh, the front picture of the garage, where that is, if there's anyone in that area that would be even probably be able to smell that um, because it just doesn't have that much of a, of a doesn't produce um, smoke. Um, there's, a, there's a small amount of, of smoke, I would say, at the peak of when it reaches the, the, the first crack of the roast, um, but it's, it's very minor. That's correct. Those, uh, so what we did is, um, and this was um, what Matt and I worked out um, and got approved by Chad, um, was these two uh, plywood panels that slide underneath the door. So you, um, the door raises up, and then the panels go in and come. So it's all painted, as you can tell, to match and look as if it, it would normally be as, 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 as discreet as possible. Mr. Bork? Uh, since <clears throat> this is an open flame uh, cooking process. Closed. Y it is closed, okay. So It's in a drum, insulated. I understand that. All right. So I just want to make sure um, that I phrase this right. But there, are there any other um, items being stored inside this garage that could be flammable in case of an, an accidental incident? Um. Are there any other items? Well, you can see there there are other things in there that uh, are in the garage. So there is um, a, uh, a safety mechanism and auto shut off with the device itself. So if it goes over temperature, it'll automatically shut off. Okay. Um, there is uh, two fire extinguishers and within walking proximity. That's what I, that's what I was getting to. Okay. Well. Good. Thank you. We'll move on to number or item B then. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian and traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in this vicinity. I believe the landlord has already spoken to that um, in terms of stipulations he's asked for. Um, but if you could just comment. Uh, it, it doesn't, it's not required for the operations and for what I'm doing. Um, and I don't, I don't attract it. I don't have any desire to have foot traffic or people um, on the property. And I'm a single owner and single operator. Uh, item C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, it operates efficiently, and it's using a standard propane tank with the standard um, fittings, uh, nothing unusual there, uh, that would create undue risk, I believe, in the neighborhood. Uh, any questions? And David, I'll ask you, you seem to know a little bit more about this. <laughs> okay. Later on in the uh, standards of performance, you say that you do make this, this 
available for customers to pick up so they don't have to pay um, the shipping fees. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, in this particular one, you know, safety, you want to create public safety problems, okay? We'll get to the safety, the performance standards later, okay? But that's that also has bearings right here in terms of vehicular traffic. So, you know, okay. so just to, sure. uh, if you could just give us a quick uh, understanding of how that works here with customers picking up. Yeah, sure. A um, uh, customer may um, order online and say, hey, I'd like a bag of coffee and I'd like to come pick it up. Uh, and they, they would notify me that that's what they're going to do. And then I would notify them when their bag of coffee is ready to go, ready to be picked up. And then I would have that available for them. So when they came to the door, I could give them the coffee. All right, so they're scheduled pickups? Yeah, Good. scheduled. Okay. I mean, it's and, within a, right. it's not like exact uh, so it, time. So if there's only one vehicle coming into that driveway at a time for customer pickups then? Yes, okay. if there was some sort of situation where I had. Now, Black Point Road is, um, it, at times of the year, it's, it has heavy vehicular traffic. Uh, is there any problem with backing out, or is there a way for a, a vehicle to turn around so that it can drive out? Yes, you could turn around at the end of the driveway. I, just to give you a sense of scale, I have one pickup in a month. Oh, so it's thank not, you. <laughs> not that kind of thing. All right, so that covers it. Brian, just, I mean, I, I don't, can't tell you what next month's going to be, but that's all right. a very few pickups. Uh, all right, well, while we're on that subject then, do you use Fork Food Lab for customer pickups? No, I don't. You do don't. That. Okay. All I right. Think as the Fork Food Lab is relatively new, and as um, as the services are available through them, I will absolutely use them. In every Talk way to possible. Corinne. All right, Dr. Corinne. Yes, thank you. And I apologize for not looking this up. 242 Black Point Road is roughly where on Black Point? 238. 238, sorry. Got it. Okay. Two roads further out towards Black Point. Two roads, so just to be on the microphone, two roads past the um, cemetery. Past the cemetery. If you're going towards the beaches, it's on the left-hand side. Got that. So it's not about a tie-up by um, uh, Highland Ave or anything like that where there's... No, and it's a straight section of road. They're, they're yeah. easy to see. Yeah. Um, uh, any other questions on item C? Otherwise, item D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't affect us. Yeah. Uh, question on that. Um, are you required by your Department of Ag uh, license to have a three compartment sink for wear washing and also a hand washing sink? Yes, that I have already. That's in the, what's called a, a cart. And it has the, it doesn't, doesn't require three. It requires one sink. I don't need to do the triple sink for this application. Okay, and so it, the, yeah, the standards expected. are a little different for home uh, yes. manufacturing. Right. Okay, thank you. And I have, I've gotten, I have the double sink in the kitchen if I needed it. And uh, I have been um, reviewed and approved for that for home processing. And then I also, with the Fork Food Lab in the South Portland Health inspectors inspected my process for preparing. Yeah, that's a different license. That's a food service license. license. So I, I got I, twice. Yeah. So you, are you, and this is really a side issue, but are you also running a, a business uh, a, uh, where you're actually serving brewed coffee anywhere? Sure. You are. Yes. All right. So I just wanted to get that out. And that's not being done from your home. No. Okay. And that's just strictly you have a cart or a food yes. truck or something? I have a, I have a rolling small. Uh, cart that gets a separate. Great. Okay. Bring that. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Nothing else. We'll move on to item E. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Okay. And you've seen the pictures here. The garage door raises up. We put the panel, I put the panels in place. Um, I have an exhaust pipe that pokes through those panels. Um, it's discreet and respectful and temporary. And it's been done with consultation with, with consultation the with the landlord. Correct. Got it. Okay. Uh, if located in a shoreland zone, uh, we'll take this as not applicable. 
I can I can confirm he's not in a shoreland zone. I thought so. Item G, the applicant has sufficient right title or interest in the site of the post. Needs to be able to carry out the proposed use. We've already heard a stipulation from landlord, which we appreciate on that. Are there any other comments or questions that we have on this one? I think we've covered this one in some detail. So we'll move that. The applicant has a technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals. We've already said a couple of of, uh, of, of, of um, expectations uh, on the part of the lease arrangement. Um, but if you could speak to any of uh, the other uh, uh, um, technical and financial ability, that would be great. Um, well, yes, first of all, it's, this is an interesting question, right? Because it's like saying, are you gonna do whatever it takes to make it right? And I, I assume it's reasonable, yes. Then of course I'd make it right. And um, I, I have, I'm, have uh, the financial I'm not sure how, if you need me to disclose to my, my finances or not, but I, I have the means, and I think you've seen the demonstration of, of the setup there, that it's not an elaborate setup um, that would require a substantial amount of modifications if you so desired. Yeah. Are there any questions on that one? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's, that's right. Uh, and then finally, um, the proposed use is compatible with the existing uses of the neighborhood with respect to the generation <coughs> of noise and operation. Yeah, and I, you can even ask the neighbor. My neighbor is directly behind the house, so he'd be able to testify to that or anyone else that is quite quiet and respectful of the neighborhood. Okay, great. Um, can I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> what if you become successful? I mean, what if somebody, you get an opportunity to double or triple the amount of coffee mm. sales? That's a great that question. Can, are you going to put in three machines? Are you going to operate more hours? Or sure. are you going to... So, so what is it that you're really asking for here? Because it says here that you're going to operate two to three hours a week. Yeah. But that's not what you really want to do ultimately, right? I mean, you really want to operate a lot more hours so that you can make more money. And Well, actually, that, that's a great question, Richard. So let's just talk about that because I th I've been working through my business plan. The, um, the process of roasting coffee itself is not that lucrative a business. Um, it... It takes a volume of coffee and you're gonna sell by bags and you have to maintain inventory at, that's at a pretty much scale. There's more value in doing the catering services because you actually takes a lot less coffee. The profit in the beveraging actually pay more, they pay more for the milk than they do the coffee. So my goal is always be to under, not to overextend my capabilities as, as a business person. Many companies we see, I mean you hear in the news, coffee shops opening up and closing on a regular basis and being way over, their investments. So my goal is to be as conservative and as small as possible. And that's why I, I just got a simple roaster. That roaster is the same size and dimensions as a much larger roaster, but it doesn't, so I could scale by going to another business. If a company like Fork Food Lab ever goes into consumer, a commercial business, I could go that way. I also have, there are other coffee businesses that do uh, consignment. So I could get completely out of the roasting process get my beans that way and not even have to roast. So there's a couple different ways to pivot, but I don't plan to make anything larger in my, my space because I don't, I, don't have, I don't want to spend the time and I don't have the hours to spend time on volume. Plus, I think you, you've got to look at, you know, what, well, what I'm looking at is I providing also more opportunities for the community. The artwork that you're seeing on my coffee bags is made by local female artists. At the, at the Congress Craft and Fair, local artists are showing their work with my coffee. I run a Portland Coffee Hunters group with over 500 members, no charge for them, and we go to coffee shops and we visit coffee shops. My goal here is to be a positive member in the coffee community, bringing and connecting people together. So maybe that's because I also am a technology consultant part-time, so I do that and I have some revenue there. I'm not solely dependent upon this as my revenue, and I don't think it's appropriate to use a residential space for anything beyond the scale I have. So if we were to approve <clears throat> the exception, if we were to condition it on operating two or three hours a week, that would be acceptable to you? I would like to have some room to scale up and scale down. What, for would, example, what, what would you like? And what would you, what would you like to have? Is, I'm concerned that, you know, that when we offer, when we give you the exception, the exception allows you to do your activity. We don't say you can only do it on Tuesdays yep, or sure. Wednesdays. Yep. So what is it that you would need for us to 
provide you? Is it 10 hour, up to 10 hours a week? We're amenable to that. I just want sure. to know what you're, what you're looking for. Well, um, I guess at my maximum desired level would be, would be two six hour days, so 12 hours a week would be good. Okay. If that's okay with you. Mm. I, haven't, I haven't had to do that, but I think that would allow me room. Yeah, let me add to this uh, conversation because there, there may be opportunities at Fork Food Lab to be able to scale there. I had a, a conversation with Corinne this okay. morning about right. this just because I knew this was coming. And um, yeah, and there are a lot of different ways he can tackle this without expanding you know, this business too much at home. Mm -hmm. So, and you pointed them out, you know, what they are. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure that um, we can help you there at Thank Fort Willow. Can I ask a question of our code enforcement officer? If, if a, a condition like a number of hours per week, is that something that you have the, the ability to enforce? Or is this the kind of thing that's typically left to the neighbors to enforce when they see an issue? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good question. Um, I'm always concerned about whether it's town council or whether it's the planning board or whether it's the zoning board or any other group putting conditions on things that are not enforceable. How do I know how many hours a week he's operating? To your point, the neighbors start to complain, hey, all I can smell is roasting coffee beans <laughs> day and night. Uh, there's 14 cars in the dooryard all the time lined up the road. Then we know something's happened. But, <coughs> you know, it, it, I, I would caution against, I, I've always cautioned against putting too many constraints around it. If you, want, if you want to place conditions, buffering or something like that that's solid, that doesn't require, you know, my knowing how many hours he's operating or, what time of day or how many days a week. I can't, there's no way to enforce that. It makes you feel good as a board because I can see the direction you're going. You want to clamp this down, but I can't enforce it. So let's get real about what we can actually expect and, and what we can actually control or, or um, you know, see. <laughs> that, that would be much more helpful, I think. And, you know, I think if, if you've looked at the, the equipment and the setup and, and the distance he is from any abutting neighbors, then there should be a reasonable comfort level that if he ran that thing six hours a day, nobody's going to hear it. Nobody's going to know it's really there any more than somebody smoking a big piece of pork. <laughs> you know, you're you, know that you know, because there's a lot of smoke and there's a lot of odor that's created there. It's pretty good odor in most cases, <laughs> but I mean, I think you have to you have to get to a point where you guys are satisfied that there's enough built-in constraints, or you can you can, as a condition, you know, place a fence, or or you know, in this case, he doesn't own the property, so it would have to. In that regard, I guess the, the owner would be a party to the appeal, but. If you had a condition that you wanted to impose that would, would, you know, address a concern, that would be better than trying to limit the number of hours or the days of the week, which is very hard to, to do. <clears throat> and I appreciate that. And <clears throat> but what we're granting him is a permit to roast coffee in his home. I mean, that's, that's ultimately what we're going to be granting him is the, is the right to do that. Now... Presumably, if there's a problem with odor, then the enforcement comes in not in terms of the permit that we've issued him. It comes in the fact that he's violating some other provision of Scarborough's zoning ordinances or, or law. He's, being, he's, a, he's a nuisance at, at that point, and the police have the right to stop nuisance activities. If, on the other hand, if 12 cars park in his driveway, there's no ordinance against 12 cars parking in his driveway, and he can do that once we grant him the permit. So, we, you know, by the only methodology that we have, I believe, is to either feel comfortable that this is all he's going to do, excuse me, to do, or to impose some condition. See, my concern about this operation, as opposed to some of the other ones we've done, 
<clears throat> you know, with respect to things like baking bread so or, mind, yeah. or selling lobsters or doing those things is that there are natural limits on that based on the, the size of the, the, the process that you go through. But in this one... I would disagree. Well, in, in this one, I just feel like... I mean, we, we do know that there is a significant odor problem that arises with coffee roasters at industrial scale. We know that there's no problem with his roaster. Now, in between there, there's a gradient. And I think we probably ought to say something about what we expect to be the operations of this facility. Can I ask another question, Brian? Mm -hmm. uh, butters are notified for this type of appeal, correct? Mm -hmm. and, and none of them bothered to weigh in. I've got no written cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was, you're also you're also in a butter. Oh, okay. I look directly behind the three window. Okay. I think there's your insurance. For yeah. You. Yeah. I was, and I was going to bring that up after we kind of summarized on, on this. To, to Richard's point, though, it, it is a good question. You said I think two to three pounds of coffee that you're roasting at any given time. How much? If you if this grew in line with your business plans, which are by design, modest and small, what would be the maximum number of pounds you'd roast in a week? See, I, I can't sell that much. Um, I don't have enough venues to be able to sell more coffee than I'm making now. So um, I would have on hand, just to make sure I had enough choices, of, it's... I'm thinking because their bags are eight ounces, they're not a pound, <laughs> and some of them are 12 ounces, they're quite small. Um, that's the thing about doing specially craft roasting. Uh, I probably ha would have about eight pounds total on hand of roasted coffee, right? And it has a freshness life, so there's a certain point where you, know, you, you have it after a month, probably, you're, you're gonna have a problem. The, the roaster also has a capacity, right? You're, you're limited by you know, how much you know, the chaff container holds for um, being able to, so you gotta stop anyways, right? And clean things out. So it, it isn't something that you could do at, at mass production, sure. but, that's, but that's specific to that roaster. The process, and you're talking about like 12 people coming in, I, I would see that the labor's not a thing here, right? I mean, what would those 12 people be doing? I mean, this one person roasting, if you had five people, they would be standing there and there would be a function to their job. There isn't anything to lift, there isn't anything to move, there isn't anything to do, but to work on, you know, turning a knob and adjusting the coffee. So the scale of occupancy or the scale of driveway, I can't see that going unless, um, unless there was some sort of event or something like that that was occurring, which would be a, a temporary event or something like that. So I, I would think that the biggest thing would probably be, you know, what happens if, if, the, if, I, if the roaster broke and I had to get a new roaster and if the roaster if it needed to be bigger, right, or had to be bigger. And I, that's where I believe it would go to a different place because I need to be respectful of the landlord, and this isn't expected to be a mass production facility. And once you, once you buy into that, then you're, you're buying a lot of, of cost, uh, and then it probably makes sense to go somewhere else to be able to do that. Uh, but also, as you said, uh, David, the Fork Food Lab hopefully will be having these types of things, if not Fork Food, uh, other places, in which case it would make it a lot easier for me to be able as to do As long as the new roaster is electric. Yes, well, they do do them electric as well. They're just, the challenge with them is efficiency, right? The, the propane is actually much more efficient. Okay, I think we'll discuss this more probably when we get to, the, um, to, to our, our findings. But um, any other questions right now? Good. Um, with that in mind, we'll, I propose moving to the performance standards so we can run through those. Um, so the, the uh, thank you for filling this out. Um, I will say too, thank you for the level of detail on this. We've had a number of special exception approvals of over the last year or so, and um, not all have been as as thoughtfully um, complete in their application. So I, I thank you for for um, working with the planning staff to do that. Um, so the first performance standard is that the occupational profession shall be carried on or wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory there there too. And I believe the evidence you've shown demonstrates that there's no um, other buildings that there's a hidden roaster that's lurking that we haven't seen yet. Right. Got it. 
Um, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to use of the dwelling. It is, this is your primary residential dwelling. You're using it as your primary dwelling, not as an Airbnb with a roaster attached. <laughs> Got it, great. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed at the home occupation. You've spoken to this already. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions. Yeah, there's no signage now. I would, um, I, I would like to be able to have a temporary sign, uh, but that's uh, with respect to whatever regulations you would, you would stipulate. I, I think since my understanding being in the neighborhood is it wouldn't be appropriate to have a permanent sign. Um, I have, when I go to the coffee, um, when I go to the farmer's market, I have a banner. I could temporarily put up a banner um, if that was okay to do, but it's not required. We can definitely, you know, work work with the signage ordinance to find something that works for you. I don't, Thank you. I don't want to go into detail on it right now, but yeah. certainly if you if you have the desire to have a sign, there are regulations in place that would allow you to do that, whether it's temporary or permanent. We can discuss that later. Great. Thank you. But, uh, and and obviously it would be a lot up to your your landlord as far as what your lease agreement allows yeah. you to have. So yeah. you might want to make sure that. That's part of your consideration when you're revising the lease. The lease. No, uh, moving on, no, no, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. We've talked about this a little, so. Is that number six? Number six, yes. I would scroll that then. Oh. We skipped five. We skipped oh, five. Uh, no, that's the exterior. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's different than the sign of jet. Okay. Uh, there shall be no exterior display, storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building. Right. Nothing stored outside the building. Yep. And you and, the, and your landlord have both noted that the uh, modifications to the garage door were done to make sure that they were as effectively invisible as possible. The garage door was not modified at all. Yeah. It just added those two added plywood. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they don't have murals or, or lots of anything. Oh. Yep, got it. Cool. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, okay, now um, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not limited, uh, but not including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. Okay. Yep. So it's quiet and no nuisance will be generated. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or to serve the residential character of the, of the immediate neighborhood. Yeah, so this you would be difficult to know it's even operating um, and there isn't any d function for having traffic come and go. Okay. In addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee, which you've said there are none. Right. And the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. And you've... Yeah, that's just one operator. If necessary, there's room for someone to pull in if they have to. Um, and um, the home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, may utilize unfinished attic and basement spaces, and space with an accessory dwelling building, accessory building, excuse me, totally not more than 1,000 square feet of area. Yeah, so you have the photos, and I think I provided a diagram too, so you can kind of see where that's how that's set up. Um, so the garage is on the bottom left hand corner, and that's the roaster setup. Um, I have my office there, um, so I have a desk there and a computer there as well. Um, so that's pretty much how things are arranged. And this would be a technical one for you, um, Brian. As a garage, that would not be included within dwelling unit space, right? Correct. Correct, okay. Um, terrific. Um, home occupations may include retail sales of the following limitations. Um, the total area is limited to 400 square feet. The sale of products is limited to products produced or um, assembled on premises with some other stipulations. But you said that there are no retail sales at the location, correct? Yeah, I, by that, um, there, someone can pick up their order. So they're, they're making their order ahead of time and they're coming to pick it up. Yep. Okay. Okay. Those are the performance standards listed in their entirety. Um, with that, I think we can uh, thank you for your presentation, Mark. Um, thank you.
There were no public uh, comments attached, no phone calls, no nothing? Brian? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, with that, I will, um, without objection from other members of the board, I'll bring the public section, um, section of this appeal to a close. And we can begin our discussion. Um, you might want to oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, excuse me. You're the landlord, but you're also a member of the public. I, I am a member of the public. I apologize, and, Mr. Garrett. I apologize. And I, I am an abutter. Yes. Um, I live directly behind 238 Black Point Road. And in, in the year and a half, one of the points was to to odors and smells and pork loins and, and whatever <laughs> else. In the year and a half he's been doing this, I can unequivocally say I can count on one hand how many times I've smelled him roasting coffee. And it's generally like, who is cooking breakfast at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Oh, it's Mark. Okay. I hear him playing a saxophone more than I do smell coffee uh, from that. So as far as noxious odors, anything like that, wood stoves in the wintertime are significantly more offensive than whatever he's doing. Um, part of the stipulation when he came to me to begin with, don't cause any traffic problems. Black Point Road is extremely busy. Um, you know, don't cause any public safety issues. And yard sales up and down Black Point Road are more of a hazard than any traffic I've seen coming in and out of 238 Black Point Road. Um, oh, there was something else I wanted to touch on. Yes, uh, coincidentally, I was involved in installing a industrial commercial size coffee roaster in town Portland. It was like 8,000 pounds on Commercial Street and we shoved it through the front of the building with a front end loader. I'm dead serious. It was huge. It was the size of a car. And that was a whole fiasco. So when he kind of came to me with this, I, my initial thought was, no, absolutely not. I've seen this before. And then he shows me his roaster that's the size of a, of a you know home office printer. And I was kind of like, OK, that's it? He goes, yeah, I'm going to do probably a couple pounds, two, three, four pounds a week at most. <laughs> All right, like that's that is not even close to what I thought it was going to be, and it's and it's a it's a specialty item, and it's you know very small batches, and 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 it's completely non-intrusive. That was the agreement we had to begin with, and honestly, if I didn't drive by three or four times a day, every so often I see the plywood in the garage door, I'd never even know he was over there doing it, never even know. And clearly, the other members of the neighborhood don't have a concern with what he's doing either, so. And um, this is not necessarily in your. Uh, you clearly had a good relationship with him in the 18 months that he's been going through this. This has worked out as you would have hoped. You've not needed to raise any concerns or anything if, like that. If he has to either move his operation or close his operation, or he has to leave because he scales to a point that he outgrows the garage, I'm going to lose a great neighbor and the best tenant that I've ever had for the. Well, let's see, I started with an investment property in 2008. So in the last 16 years, I don't hear a peep from him. Takes care of the property. Anytime I've had to go in for a maintenance issue or whatever, it's neat as a pin. Um, and again, it's just he's the best tenant I've ever had. So if, if, if he has to move because he can't continue this operation, or he scales to a point that he needs to get into a bigger space and doesn't want to continue living on Black Point Road, um, then I stand to lose, you know, a, a good neighbor and a good tenant. And I have nothing to gain from this operation. Appreciate I have that. Absolutely nothing to gain from it. So. Thanks very much. And sorry to have uh, run over you uh, when we close the public conversation. This is very <laughs> helpful. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, that's safe. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll close the public comment. Um, and um, we'll go into general discussion first, and then we can run through fight as a fact. Any general topics that we want to say ahead of time? I think the criteria are, are met. That's my general takeaway. We'll go through the criteria, obviously. But not. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the, the only issue for me was the, uh, uh, as I addressed right away, was standing. All right. Mm -hmm. This miscellaneous appeal, all miscellaneous appeals are probably the easiest appeals that we ever face. Okay. This isn't a miscellaneous appeal. Excuse me. <laughs> what is it? Special exception. Special exception. Special exception. Okay. But yes, yeah, special exception for 
for home businesses. Okay, yeah. I mean we face a lot of them. Yep, they're easy. They are. Yeah. In general. They but should be easy. We, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so okay. So, and then we have the folks selling shellfish. But um, yeah, and these sort of come up when you know things that are already happening are discovered, and that's fine. You know, so we do our thing. So that's the only comment I really want to make is that uh, I think that you know all the standards and so forth have been met very nicely. Uh, Mark has provided all kinds of um, backup material to be able to explain what he's doing, and I feel comfortable going forward you know, with this. I'll, I'll, I propose just um, going to the finance. I think that's where we'll, where we'll get to some of the meat of this. Again, I'd like to thank the applicant for putting together a complete package. Um, thank the, the board for raising the standing issues early on, um, and um, and thank the landlord too. My big concern on this one uh, coming into it was odor, but my vision of coffee roasting was a small car on Commercial Street inside of a building or whatever pumping out steam. It doesn't smell like steam. It smells like a fire with some coffee behind it. Um, what has been clear here, and it's been helpful here from the landlord who would have the most issue, not only as the landlord as in the butter, that to scale that issue in my mind, it's like, okay, that this, this, is, this is not the droid I was looking for. So um, I appreciate that. Um, but with that, let's go through the um, findings of fact. And um, uh, do I have, the, yes I do. Um, the first one is, uh, we'll go through the findings first and then we'll go through the, um, the uh, performance criteria. Uh, the uh, proposed use will not create unsanitary, unhealthful conditions by, um, by reason of sewage disposal, emissions of the air, water, or other aspects of design or operation. Um, uh, we'll do this as we normally do. Um, David, you start and then... Um, okay. Uh, so the board finds that the uh, roasting equipment is designed to adequately capture the particulate emissions that would otherwise uh, become airborne, and there is no other unhealthy or unsanitary condition created in the operation. Any thoughts? Are we broadly in agreement with that? Okay. Uh, quick show of hands. All in favor? That's five to nothing. We are good for A. B. Richard. <clears throat> the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. <clears throat> the applicant has just explained that there are no employees, so there will be no employee traffic. There will rarely be occasional pickups by people who have ordered online. Uh, I can't see that creating any kind of tra unsafe traffic conditions on Black Point Road. So I think the criteria has been met. Any discussion, any thoughts? Nope. Uh, show of hands in agreement with that. Unanimous, uh, we vote yes. The C, uh, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially different degree of fire or pro police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Uh, the, uh, I think we could find and agree with the um, statements by the appellant that uh, the roasting equipment limits roasting temperatures um, and the, there's un, it is unlikely that there will be any greater need for fire or police protection here. So I think this has been substantially met. Any thoughts? Oh. Oh. Can I ask one question of the landlord? Sure. Do, do you know whether or not your insurance coverage will go up as a result of this operation? Did, have you talked to the insurance companies at all about it? May I please? Mark, Mark has provided a copy of his business insurance policy, mm -hmm. okay, which is totally separate from everything else, and that covers it. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? I believe this has been met. If I can see a show of hands for yes. That's unanimous. Kyle, if you would cover D. <clears throat> 
the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. I think we should make a finding that um, because no water is used, there will be no effect on water supplies, and because the proposed use will have no uh, effect on the footprint of the building or any other moving of earth that could result in sedimentation or erosion, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion. I concur. Any thoughts or comments from other board members? None? So I see a show of hands agreeing with that finding. Okay. Oh, yes, I agree with my proposed finding. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, that is unanimous. Um, uh, Joe, if you would do E. Sure. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, it's a small home occupation. Uh, very small, as we saw from the diagram, very small portion of the garage will be used for the production. Uh, certainly the venting uh, solution that the gentleman had come up with is very discreet. You wouldn't even know it. I drive by this place all the time. I wouldn't have even known it was there. Um, so certainly it, it's not out of character and it's, it's um, it, you know, Nobody's going to know it's there for all intents and purposes. So I think this standard has been met. Okay. Any other comments on that one? Seeing none, a show of hands to agree with that finding. That is unanimously in favor. Um, I'll cover F, which is the minimus one. Um, the proposed use will not play, take place in the shoreline zone, but we've had an attestation of that fact by the CEO. Um, all, in, all in favor with that finding? That's unanimous. Um, Richard, I'd like to take G, because I think this is the, the, the one where we might have some conversation. Sure. <clears throat> the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. This is the, <clears throat> this is the issue that we had talked about at the beginning. Yeah. Um, I think with a representation by the landlord that the lease will be amended, and a copy of that lease the amendments to the lease provided to us to enter into the record, I think that we can find that the applicant does have sufficient right title and interest to operate. I think it really is important that we have as part of the record the amended or the, the new lease which allows for the op this activity to take place. Without that, I think the permit would have to be viewed as invalid. And so I think we make, you have to make sure that we have that in the record So I, can, I can add a line item in there or change the uh, one that excludes home occupation, et cetera, et cetera, when the lease to change. Okay, good. And I think that's probably the only thing that has to change. I don't know whether, David, you found that's anything fine. else. I didn't see anything else in the lease other than that. You can plow my driveway anytime you want with that 24-hour notice. So that's don't 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 hesitate. But no, I, I think that that's I mean that's right. But th but this is a different kind of home occupation. I, you know, it's one thing to take your emails at night when you're operating an office and communicating. But you were actually physically doing something on the property, and I think that's why the exception is necessary. And and one thing I, I'd appreciated that is that. Part of the the um, allowance of the home occupation is without disruption to neighboring tenants or abutters, because um, I think we will end up relying on you as the landlord, but also as the butter, in case he starts pumping out a lot more odor. Um, without adverse impact to um, uh, n uh, neighbors or abutters. Um, so to, to your point, home occupations. Are, are, are everywhere. Um, we see every now and again the home occupations which do 
baked bread, um, which, uh, which, which do things like this, which could annoy a neighbor at some point. And, um, and having a landlord there is somebody who can help, him, help the CEO enforce that, they're, that um, abutters are not being dis, um, discomforted by what's going on. That's appreciated. Having you as the butter and the landlord is just icing on the cake. Sitting next to your landlord ain't for everybody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and so the reason we're sitting here is the fact that he was in here trying to do the right thing and not because he was sneaking around trying to get away with something. I appreciate that. So, thanks. So, um, yeah. So, sorry. One thing to add. Yes, the, the testimony of the landlord also stated that uh, best tenant ever. And mm -hmm. I can also add to it that when I talked to Corinne, the um, the executive director, well, deputy executive director of Fort Food Lab this morning, she said that uh, Mark is definitely a member of good standing. And so uh, that adds to the financial part. That'll be the next one. Um, right now we're just doing it with Val at least, though. So but we'll get you that on the next one, though, because um, you're going to cover the next one, actually. Uh, but um, I think for item G, um, the, we, we've, we've added a, um, a requirement that we see the updated lease language, but otherwise, with that, added to it, we find that this has been met. Um, so could I see a show of hands? If, no further? That's unanimous. Terrific. And now we'll talk about the f technical and financial ability, which I believe you may have some uh, knowledge of. My Ms. previous Port. comment. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other comments on that one? I think the... Zero. Yeah. Um, any other comments? Terrific. Uh, we find that the, uh, uh, the applicant has de demonstrated the adequate technical and financial capability necessary. Um, a show of hands, please. That's unanimous. And um, the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of occupation. Um, we've uh, heard a description of what the hours are, uh, are, are and may likely grow to become, all of which are well within um, minimal, um, uh, 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 um, uh, minimal limits for uh, the R2 district and on and Black Point Road. So I think we can find the equipment used is adequately quiet and that the use is compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood. Without any comment, all in favor? That is unanimous. So um, we have voted on that one. Um, I'm going to first go through the home occupations and then I'll vote on the appeal as a whole. Is that right? right? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could... Uh, suggest that you could vote on the home occupation standards as a whole that's instead of going I, one by one. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to do. Yes. No, we, I have a good record on keeping these meetings relatively short, so. I didn't say that you didn't. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but with that, before we take a vote on the, uh, on the approval itself, um, we've gone through and had a chance to um, query on the uh, on, uh, on performance standards. Um, I don't think anything came up on this that we had any concerns with in the discussion, but I'll open it up for general comment. Seeing none, um, we believe uh, we find that the performance standards have been met. Can I have a vote up or down? Agree the performance standards have been met. And on that basis, can I have a roll call for an approval of special exception permit number 2762 for Mark Peterson at 238 Black Point Road? Doreen? David Bort? Yes. Richard Silkman? Yes. Peter Freilinger? Yes. Carol Noonan? Yes. And Joe Dorn? Yes. The motion is approved. And uh, thank you very much for your patience. Your um, permit is approved. And we'll look forward to getting that additional lease information. And then you can work with the, uh, the, the department and uh, move forward. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Okay. Um, that's the only item on the agenda tonight. So any comments from the board? Good. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Seconded. Second. Approved. All in favor, approved. The zoning board is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience for that discussion. Thank you.